how much of a deficit would be too much. And I think it's important before I answer that. And before, I mean, I guess I need to set a context for everything that I'm going to speak to. The audience that I focus on and the people I research, they are not obese. They are not sedentary. So the answers that I'm going to give, unless I say else, unless I say otherwise, it's really this unique population, probably like you and like me, we're not necessarily bodybuilders, but we work out. We try to not have a lot of extra body fat on our bodies. We're not sedentary. And in some cases, people are trying to get a little bit leaner. So the, the answers that I give on any of this stuff, or as I talk about weight loss, it's always important to look at that context because it might not be the same for an obese person or somebody who's sedentary. Now, many times okay. the same principles apply. Probably 80% of them, I mean, most of the time the same principles apply. But this particular question, what's, what's, the, what's a, an appropriate caloric deficit? Well, I'm going to base this on the research that we've done in my lab. We've now done probably about four studies, weight loss studies in lean people, so people who aren't overweight. And what we found is that a 25% reduction from maintenance calories seems about right. Now, there's, there's two things I need to highlight. Anything more than that, I don't know, but I would be cautious. 25% is fairly aggressive. But what we do is our subjects always resistance train and we watch them. So it's not like we're taking them at their word. Like we physically are there counting every rep and they eat a high protein diet, typically about 1.8 to two grams per kg. So the, if the, the, my answer to you is I think anything more than 25% might be a little too aggressive as far as a okay. weekly average. And I'll also say the studies that we've done, we, the subjects maintain their muscle mass and metabolic rate very well over a six to eight week diet period with that approach. Okay. What happened with a 40%? I think our subjects would lose more muscle mass and I think yeah. they would probably suppress their metabolic rates. Now it's interesting, the rapid fat loss study that we started talking about, that's nearly a 40% reduction over two weeks. It's about 37.5%. So we're going to mm -hmm. know, at least in a two-week period of time, did we lose any muscle mass? Did we lose, did, did metabolic rate go down? So I'm going to have data on that hopefully okay. by, um, by the end of the year. Hopefully December, we're finished with, with, that, with that study. But I think 40% is aggressive. I've done 40% trying to keep my protein high. It's, it's not enjoyable. No, and I probably think trying to maintain a high protein diet with that such a small calorie budget, you're going to struggle to feed in carbohydrates and fats because pretty much protein will take over most of your calories. Yeah, and it's funny you say that. We had a few subjects, their calories were fairly low to start, and then we cut their calories and they have to get 2.2 grams of protein. So literally for a subject or two, it was literally almost all protein in their diet. And when you say, when you use protein in your studies, what sort of protein do you mean? Whey protein uh, and supplementation or normal food, real food from protein sources? So both. So we don't tell them okay. what type of protein to ingest. The only thing that we validate is we give them whey protein immediately after their workouts. You know that they're at least getting 25 grams of protein after every workout. Um, but these, other than that, the subjects are getting their own through supplements or through food. So we, we don't say you have to get X amount from okay. this or an X from that. This weight loss is really more of an uneducated diet, dieters approach. Fat loss is more of a, an educated dieter's approach to, to optimizing their physique. And I don't say that to be rude. I say that because if people are focused on weight and not, not fat, they're uneducated. And that's on us. That's on me to educate the, the community, our, our clients, or our subjects um, in a research study. 
And I also, I use those terms interchangeably at times. It's not because I like to think it's not because I'm ignorant, but I, I'm trying to reach people who don't know the difference. So I will use them interchangeably until they're up to speed on the difference. So there's the first thing. So yes, when you're looking at a scale number, especially if you're resistance training, and especially if you're, if you're having a high protein diet, hard to, to look at the scale and make definitive conclusions. So I recommend that people get a body composition assessment about once a month and or a, some other measure, maybe a waist measurement, Maybe they take a skin fold caliper measurement of their fat thickness of their ab abdominal region, somewhere that they can get themselves, that they can get skilled at assessing what's going on. Now, for most people, this, the, the general population isn't going to do that. So they have to go by the scale. And to that, I just say, okay, that's fine, but we, I'm going to have to, oh, I'm going to over communicate the lesson that. We can't always assume that progress isn't being made if you're lifting weights and if you're having high protein. But that's why we got to have some other measures to help us paint a more full picture. Would you recommend any other practical way to follow up your body composition progress as long as you go that is not necessarily depending on a DEXA scan or uh, by BIA or anything like that. So something that is practical that you can look at uh, for someone who has, hasn't got tools available uh, around them. Yeah, I, I personally, my favorite thing is a, to get a skin fold caliper and to teach the person to pinch their abdominal fat area. Because if you, if you can get good at that, and it's not hard to get good at it, you just have to practice what you're actually measuring is fat. You're not measuring yeah. water like a BIA. You're not measuring bone density in pixels on a screen like a DEXA or air volume in a bod pod. When you take a simple skin fold, you're literally measuring the thickness of the fat. And if we're going to be technical, the, the, the thickness of skin as well. But the skin isn't going to change much. So to me, that's the best thing. It's practical. It's relatively cheap. And it's just skill acquisition so you just have to get to the point where you can go in yourself and do it now i'll say this there are now m many scales that will offer bia which is a bioelectrical impedance analysis that will also give you body composition that is better than nothing i use it myself especially now because i don't i don't have my staff that's able to test my body composition so that's better than nothing but i i love skin folds Probably the way I see BIA is that it needs to follow us like some kind of a strict protocol if you want to get consistent data from it versus like if you just jump on whatever time it is uh, and you don't follow a protocol, you will get so many different uh, readings of just your body fats and all of these things. So what do you think about the accuracy a BIA could have if you have that at home, or, or what do you think you have to follow uh, as a protocol to to kind of have reliable data? Yeah, so to me, it's easy. You get up, you urinate, and you stand on the scale. That's you. You should never stand on the scale any other time. First thing in the morning after you urinate, get on the scale. And if you do it nude, great. Just do it nude every day. If you have your your shorts and t-shirt on, whatever you're gonna wear just have the same thing on consistently. So, Correct. but yeah, man, if you weigh yourself after lunch, especially with BIA, cause that's very sensitive to water changes. It's, it's, yeah, you're going to be very depressed or overly optimistic certain days. What would be your approach to someone who wants to lose a kilogram of body fat? What would be your sort of the way you approach this? Yeah, so what I would do is I would, I would ask for two weeks of just getting baseline data. Tell me what you're eating. What is, your, what is your body weight 
and are you able to maintain that body weight eating your normal amount of food so that we now have some basis of your maintenance calories and i like to take two weeks for that when i used to work with kids, that was it was a very hard sell. Nobody wanted to wait two weeks to start a diet when they were working with me. I had to, I don't want to say argue, but it was, it just was not an easy sell. But I don't want to jump right into a diet. I need data. And I, I, I always tell them, I'm psycho. I'm a scientist. I have to have data. So that's what I would do. Let's determine how many calories you ingest where you won't gain weight or lose. Then what I would do is ask them how fast or slow are you comfortable with losing this kilogram of fat and let's say they say I want to lose it aggressively to me aggressive has a number one percent of your body weight per week so then I would come up with a plan all right here's a plan now this plan means almost nothing but at least it's a plan but after the first week our plan is going to be completely changed depending on how your body's responding but I like having something on planned ahead of time. So I would reduce their calories. Probably, again, if they said they wanted to lose it fast, I would probably start at about a 25% caloric restriction for the first week and see what happens. And of course, I would ask them to get a body composition measurement or something if they can. If they can't, that's fine. We'll use the scale. And hopefully we can use a caliper to, to measure fat of the abdomen area. So after the first week, now we're going to make adjustments. If they lost some weight, I don't want to make any adjustments. I'm like, okay, you're responding to this. I want to milk this for all it's If you're going to keep losing fat, I don't want to drop your calories further. I want, to, I want you to, to diet on as many calories as possible. And again, 25% is where I would start if they wanted to be aggressive. If, they, if, if the answer was, hey, I, I don't mind taking this easy, then I would probably start around 15% and, and use the same approach.